everybody Trey Hensley here obviously you're on my channel <laughs> but uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in today uh, for I guess this is the third um, bending your ear <laughs> video so uh, yeah thank you all for tuning in I appreciate that I've uh, been out on the road for the past couple days um, been uh, out to Jackson Hole Wyoming and Bozeman Montana and um, Let's see, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and um, uh, at the Earl Scruggs Center in Shelby, North Carolina, and um, played last night in Raleigh, North Carolina, getting ready to head out uh, for Tucson and uh, Phoenix here in a couple days. And uh, yeah, I've been, been very busy, and um, but yeah, I've been wanting to make another one of these videos and try to keep this thing <laughs> as uh, regularly as I can get it, you know. Um, and yeah, I'll try to do another live video soon. I had some technical difficulties on that last live video, but uh, thanks for bearing with me. And uh, yeah, I'll try to get another one of those going soon. But uh, yeah, start off like always with a uh, little gear stuff. Um, this is a, a newer Doc Watson, uh, Doc Watson model uh, Gallagher guitar. And uh, Gallagher are just building some incredible instruments um, over in Murfreesboro. Um, home state, home team guys, but uh, they've obviously been building guitars for a long time. Um, built a bunch for the Doc, for Doc Watson and uh, for a lot of uh, great players. Uh, Jim Hurst plays a, a Gallagher and um, uh, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of great, you know, Gallagher players, a lot of great Gallagher guitars out there. But the new stuff is really great and I'm really liking this guitar a lot. It's got a... Um, uh, prototype LR bags pickup in it, which is top secret, and uh, I can't tell anybody about it. But it sounds really great. Um, I haven't been able to play it much live. Um, I've got all my stuff set up uh, on my pedal board for my D41, which has been my main road guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring this one out at some point. Uh, but I've used it on a lot of sessions and stuff. It's great. Um, mahogany back and sides. Um, I'm not sure what the top is. I'm assuming Addy top. Uh, but it sounds really great. As Doc said, it rings like a bell. Or I guess Merle Travis said that about, about Doc's guitar. But uh, anyway, yeah, Gallagher, Doc Watson model. Um, I was using a uh, Page Pro capo. This is the first one that I got from the Page people. Uh, it's a really cool capo. Um, and uh yeah i guess that's about it oh diodario strings like always nickel bronze medium gauge 13 17 26 35 45 and 56. some guy yelled at me on the youtube comments that i didn't know the string gauges but i'm learning as we go folks learning as we go um 
today I kind of wanted to talk about something that um, is probably my favorite part of playing guitar. Um, and, and I'm gonna kind of summarize it by saying um, just serving the song and neighbors mowing the yard. So there might be some background noise, but uh, serving the song is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, you know, a lot of people, I get the comments occasionally on, on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or, or wherever, um, but mainly Instagram where it's, you know, the, the reels, um, or I'm assuming like TikTok, those little short video clips um, of me playing something, you know, just sitting around in my house. Um, I'm kind of a low-tech guy. I just use my iPhone and record videos where I can. A lot of times when I'm practicing, it, it, it's one of those things that it started out by helping me practice. Uh, I would, you know, set a phone out and just record my guitar. If you, if you've followed my Facebook page or my Instagram page for any amount of time, a few years ago, it would just be these horribly crude videos of like this much of my guitar and that's all you could see. And, um, uh, you know, because I was just trying to film or, or video myself playing um, to watch my technique and stuff, uh, especially right hand stuff. Just trying to get all this right hand stuff down, and I talked about that in the first video. Um, so, you know, I, I started out doing that, and then I would post them just, uh, you know, to have some content or, or, you know, just to kind of give a glimpse out on the road of, yeah, here we are picking and uh, in a hotel room in Jackson, Mississippi, or wherever, you know, and, and uh, and it became where I posted more and more of them. And anyway, long story short, you know, a, a lot of times when I post something, it's just a very short clip of a song, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. And a lot of times it's just me fooling around and maybe it's something up tempo or something fast and I'll get the comments, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, do, do you not know anything slow or, or, you know, I like slow songs. And, and to that point, I will say that I like slow songs too. Unfortunately, the Instagram, algorithm has proven that <laughs> slow songs are you know you've, you've got like two seconds to grab somebody's attention and you know slow song doesn't always do the trick but um i, I just wanted to kind of break down the that fourth wall of of that side of it and i think you know when people see instagram videos or or facebook videos you're just getting a glimpse you're just getting a snapshot of what somebody does you're not getting the full picture and it's the same with anything on instagram i'm not gonna harp on you know social media today but it's it's you're just getting a glimpse of somebody's life you know you're getting the good pictures of their vacation <laughs> you're not getting you know uh that they had a crappy breakfast one morning you know you're, you're not getting hardships on the road you're getting the good side of the road or, or you're getting you know, when I post a video, you're not getting the the 10 takes that I did before that, that sucked. You're getting the one that might be okay, you know, and I still hate it, but I, that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to, I, I continually try to work on my playing. Um, but I, just to get that out of the way, you know, a lot of these Instagram videos, um, I'll just say chill. <laughs> They're not that serious. If you're going to Instagram to get your music fixed, you're going to the wrong place. Um, but I do want to talk about serving the song because that's my favorite part of playing the guitar is playing actual songs. Um, I started playing the guitar because I loved Flight and Scruggs. Um, and particularly, I loved a Flight and Scruggs record called uh, Flight and Scruggs Play the Famous Songs of the Carter Family, where Earl played a lot of guitar, Mother Maybell played auto harp. Uh, it's a great record. It's a very cool record. But again, Earl plays a lot of the guitar on there. He plays Wildwood Flower, which is what I started this off with. Um, and it's a lot of melodic playing, a, a lot of serving the song playing. Um, and I love that. That's my favorite type of guitar playing. That's my favorite thing to do is to just sit around and play melodies of uh, these beautiful melodies of these songs. Um, so a lot of times when people come up and they want to learn fiddle tunes, you know, or they want to learn fast flat picking, um, you know, that I always say, well, listen to records and that is a good that's that's how I've learned. I play by ear. I don't read tabs. I don't write tabs. Uh, I can't read a lick of music. I don't know any theory, as you can probably tell. Uh, but I just sat around listening to records, and so I would listen to Earl play. <laughs> or from that same record. That's 
a song called The Carter's Blues that uh, and it might be called False Hearted Lover um, on the Flight and Scruggs record. I'm not sure, but it's it's Carter's Blues. And it ended up being this very cool Larry Sparks thing where he, he plays it, you know. Side note on that. That's uh, somebody asked in one of my other videos if I would talk some about Larry Sparks guitar playing. And uh, I'll, I'll go on a little tangent about Larry Sparks, um, who might possibly be my favorite guitar player. Um, he is just amazing, you know, and, and I think he's a, a master of serving the song. Um, if you listen to Larry Sparks play the guitar, um, he, he plays with so much feel he adds so much blues to the guitar, um, but it's always about the song. You know, it's 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 always melody based, melodic based. So um, to kind of brief things up, I don't want to take too much time on this, but um, when everybody asks about learning fiddle tunes or, or learning songs in particular, um, I, I've been really strictly saying lately learn the melody as close as possible so if like you're you're working on you know gold rush and you want to work on you know tony rice's version of it um which is amazing you know, there's, there's several different tony rice versions but um you know learn the, the the melody part of it work on that and then you can learn t some of tony's other licks from the song later if you can you know um but a lot of people you know They want to work on the... They want to work on that side of Tony's playing, and that side's great. I love that side, but they don't so much focus on the... You know um <laughs> that second part you don't you don't really know what that is you know it it could be gold rush it could be you know uh, um big river <laughs> it could be uh you know old danny boy you know you don't really know what that is um tony was a master of pulling that off he always i never thought he disserved the song he always he always came back to the little melody points um and i feel like a lot of people kind of miss that uh, and, and myself included, it's something that I, I work on, um, uh, is just breaking it down to the, to the melody. Um, when all else fails, the melody's still there. You know, it, um, I think that's a, a big key thing. So when people want to work on learning fiddle tunes, you can add your, your part of it later, but I kind of reference the originals a lot. I like to go back, especially lately, uh, to the Kenny Baker records and learn, Kenny's fiddle parts, you know, heck, he's responsible for a lot of these fiddle tunes, uh, him and Bill Monroe, uh, probably more so Kenny, but uh, if you listen to Kenny play and hear those melody notes and pick out what he's playing, that's the song, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Um, when, when somebody calls Gold Rush, if you're at a jam and you call Gold Rush, 
and you're the first person kicking it off and you know how how is anybody you know a lot of times whenever i was a kid first starting out playing um and I, and again i play by ear when i would go to a jam I just loved it when a fiddle player kicked off the song because they're they're gonna play the melody. They're gonna establish the melody. A lot of times, you know, it'll just go around in a circle and I would always hope I was third or fourth in the circle because when it come to my guitar break, I had picked up parts of the melody or I would at least try to pick up parts of the melody. And um, because otherwise, you know, you're just kind of playing licks. And I, 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 I try to avoid playing licks. Um, at this point because you know it's a great thing when you're working on licks to be able to utilize them in a jam um but i just i, I love the melody of, of songs you know for the most part you know that's why <laughs> that's why we play gold rush that's why we play salt creek that's why we play wildwood flower and the carter's blues and whiskey before breakfast and um little cabin home on the hill is because they all have melodies you know otherwise bluegrass could get monotonous if it was just you know g chord c chord and d chord and free for all notes um in between there so i'll, I'll i'm all i'm saying in this is uh, learn your melodies <laughs> um and i'm working on it myself you know again what got me into this was listening to the carter family and um and jimmy rogers and and flat and scruggs and you know some of those beautiful beautiful melodies and um so yeah, go back and listen to those records. And, and it kind of goes into my first video where I say practice with intent, listen with intent. Um, when you're listening to records, you can just kind of turn your brain off and listen to stuff, but keep searching. You know, if, if you're way into Tony Rice like I was, then dig down the road and listen to the Kenny Baker original or, you know, um, or whoever wrote the song, Norman Blake, listen to, to Norman Blake play the guitar, listen to the Carter family play the guitar, um, listen to Larry Sparks, um, you know, and, and don't just learn licks, learn the melodies of these tunes. And another, another trick to that that I like is picking out a few songs um, that you can sing. And just, you know, it can be, if you're, if you're into bluegrass, learn a few bluegrass songs. If you're into country, learn a few country songs. Um, but even if you don't sing, um, learn a few songs that you can sing while you're practicing and uh, listen to the melody of the notes that you sing. So like, for instance, Little Cabin Home on the Hill. Still, well, all I have to do now is sit alone and cry in our little cabin home on the hill. For someone has taken you from me and left me here all alone. Just listen to the rain beat on my window pane in our little cabin home on the hill. Tonight I'm alone without you, my dear It seems there's longing for you still well, All I have to do now is sit alone and cry In our little cabin home on the hill I can't really play it while I'm singing it, but you get the idea. <laughs> what I'm trying to play is just the melodies, the, the notes of the melody of the song. Um, and another reason that I suggest working on singing a few songs um, is working on your rhythm playing and what you play while you're playing rhythm. Um, a lot of times I've been to jams and it's not just the guitar player, but you'll hear, you know, the mandolin player or the banjo player or the fiddler noodling, you know, while somebody else is taking a solo. And, um, you know, or the guitar player, if it's Gold Rush, you know, being really busy and, you know, while other players are playing. <laughs> You 
you know, it's it's all good. We all know you're there. <laughs> you know, it just kind of chill a little bit. And uh, I, I really like to, to listen to people, you know, like Tony and Jimmy Martin and Del McCurry and, and great rhythm guitar players that know when to play and when not to play and play with dynamics. And um, I just, it's a, it's a really big thing to get in a jam session and just get excited and, hey, this is where I can show what all I know. Um, but again, practicing with intent. When you're home, uh, learn to sing these songs and whatever you can play whenever you're singing, which for me is not much. I can't play that much when I'm singing. The only, the only few songs that I've actively worked on singing while I play. And there are a few, there's probably a few more that I can mention, but uh, I, I do try to keep it as simple as possible when I'm playing rhythm behind my own singing. And therefore I try to keep it as simple as possible when somebody else is, is singing or playing. Um, it's their turn to talk whether they're playing or whether they're singing, it's their turn. They're in the, they're the star. There's a, a great, um, uh, great quote from, um, <laughs> I forget who, who even said it, but um, yeah, when, when I'm singing, I'm the stars. It was, that was how the quote went. It might've been Jimmy Martin, I can't remember, but uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, let them be the star, let them, let, if you're at a jam session and the banjo player's taking a break, let them shine. You know, if, if the mandolin player plays something that's gonna let them shine, and that's keeping it simple and keeping it as strictly to the melody as you can, and you know, adding stuff in when you want to. And But just, just remembering, making a mental note to just, you know, calm down and relax. And I have to do that for multiple things, I get, you know, I, I deal with some anxiety and, and I, you know, a lot of times on stage uh, have have dealt with that. So I have to remind myself that, hey man, everything's cool. We've been here before, we've done this. Um, and same with playing rhythm or playing anything. You know, it's like, hey, we're all good. You don't, you don't, you just chill and sit back and, and serve the song, serve the other musicians. And, and we're all, we're all in this together. We're all playing the song. Um, but uh, yeah, like, and I was saying, one of the other songs that I that I play rhythm to myself is on uh, the, the third verse of Mama Tried, and it's just because on the record, the background guitar playing is so important to that song that I wanted to learn it, but uh, it's, I believe it's James Burton playing uh, dobro guitar. That's the kind of the background rhythm stuff he's doing. But anyway, when I sing it, the second or the third verse is, Dear old daddy, rest his soul, left my mom a heavy load. She tried so very hard to fill his shoes. Working hours without rest, wanted me to have the best. Well, she tried to raise me right, but I refused. That's about as complex as I get. Otherwise, it's, you know, Well, tonight I'm alone without you, my dear. Well, it seems there's a longing for you still. You know, very simple sort of runs to the to the chord, you know. But tonight I'm alone without you, my dear. Just a walk from a G note to a C note, or just, you know, or... D run, G run, um, all those good things. That's about as complex as I like to get. And I'm not saying you have to do everything like me. I'm just, the point of these videos is to kind of break down what I do a little bit um, and answer some questions. And so uh, another one that I'll get to real quick is, you know, people are, what's the top five fiddle tunes I need to learn? I can't really, it, it'll be top five of the day. A few of them are always on my list, like Gold Rush, I would suggest always work on Gold Rush, even if it's a very... very simplistic thing. Just work on those notes. Um, another one would be Whiskey Before Breakfast. Uh, another one, and then it, it, there's also Tears. If you're just starting out in bluegrass guitar, if you're just starting out on guitar, period, um, Wildwood Flowers got to be the first thing you learn. And then uh, Carter's Blues, the one I played earlier, is a good one.
goes back to that first video where I talk about my alternate picking, the, the downstroke, upstroke, downstroke. That's a good one for working on that. That's all alternate picking stuff there on that. Um, another one for guitar players would be Black Mountain Rag. Uh, that's a that's a biggie, uh, Doc Watson version, yeah. part there. It's such a, a big important thing in bluegrass music. You learn that and you've unlocked a lot of things, you know. That's just a, a little G lick that it's all kind of Black Mountain Rag, you know, it's the same. It's all kind of <laughs> Black Mountain Rag. But no, it all kind of spawns from that style of picking. Um, so that's a biggie. Uh, Salt Creek's another really good one. Um, I could kind of list off a bunch of them, but, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, get a Kenny Baker record and, uh, and learn some Kenny Baker fiddle tunes. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I don't know what I'm going to end on, but, uh, maybe I've, uh, let's see, what can I do? Um... How about we do uh, the perfect serve your song, serve the song, song, um, you are my flower. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments um, what y'all want volume four to be about, and we'll talk about that possibly. See y'all next time. sing this song and say to one and all you are my flower that's blooming in the mountain so high you are my flower that's blooming there for me So high 
You are my flower that's blooming there for me. <laughs> Another thing is make sure your capo gets all the strings on there. <laughs> that's what you want. Let's fix that real quick. Another biggie, uh, well, I've got you here, is uh, listen to Larry Sparks' record, uh, John Deere Tractor, which every song on there is great, but he plays uh, such a great solo up here in Carter Family World, capo on the seventh fret. That's just a G, you know, if you're playing with no capo, he'd be in G position down here, like that. But I play up here for the Carter Family stuff, because that's where Mother May Bell and Earl, and they played it out of the C position, so... But anyway, if you listen to uh, Nobody's Business by Larry Sparks, his guitar solo is so great on that. And it's the perfect example of serving the song. So it's... She drives the limousine, I crank the old machine. Nobody's business what I do. Nobody's business, nobody's business, nobody's business what I do. That's my favorite uh, guitar solo. Alright, I'm going to get out of this uh, seventh capo world, and I'm also going to sign off for today. Hope y'all have a great day, and I'll see you soon for Volume 4. Let me know what y'all want to talk about, or what you want me to talk about. <laughs> see you later.